welcome back to my channel or welcome to those tuning in for the first time. I am so happy to be back with you all after a small week break. There's a lot going on in my life right now, y'all, and I promise y'all it will slow down very soon. Lots of exciting stuff that I am super excited to share with all of y'all, so stay tuned for that coming up in the next few videos. But I wanted to kind of switch directions from my normal videos. I mentioned in the past maybe couple videos that I was preparing for a stockpile sale. Well, that has commenced and I had filmed a little bit of footage for you guys during that time that I was preparing for that sale and throughout the duration of that sale. So I want to bring you guys basically just the basics of preparing for a stockpile sale. I get a lot of questions on Instagram, you know, kind of how I prepare, how I advertise, what do I price my items at? So I am bringing all of that to you in this video so if you are thinking about doing a sale or have one coming up i hope anything in this video can be helpful to you and to aid you in being successful in your own stockpile sale now please keep in mind this is how i do my sale it is not the end all be all way to do a stockpile sale it is what works for me and what i have seen best results for me and my area in which i live in there are going to be a lot of factors that will determine, you know, pricing, advertisement, and other different areas of the sell. So please keep that in mind throughout the video, but I am super excited to share this with y'all. And like I said, I do hope it can be of help to someone. But before I hop into that, y'all, please make sure you are subscribed and that you have the notification bell turned on. So that way you guys don't miss any of my savings tips as well as my hauls. All right, y'all, let's hop into it and let's go over how to prepare and execute a stockpile sale. All right, y'all, let's start by talking about what exactly a stockpile sale is and what purpose it serves. So a stockpile sale is just like a garage sale. Now, we should all know for the most part what a garage sale is, but just in case, a garage sale is when you take used and new items out of your home and you place them in the garage or the driveway and you sell them to your neighbors or other members of your community. So in similar fashion, you take your stockpile that you couponed or clearance shop and you sell them. So you may be thinking, Lauren, what purpose does a stockpile sale serve? So there are a couple reasons why people host stockpile sales. The first one, if you're an extreme couponer, you have a lot of stuff, a lot, a lot of stuff that you could not possibly ever use up. So you host a stockpile sale to sell your items in mass. Okay, so stockpile sale is a great way to get rid of a ton of your items at one time. Next, people would like to make money from the items that they coupon or clearance shopped. Now you may be thinking, well, why don't you donate? Well, you can, you can most certainly donate. I do both, but I also do like to make a little bit of money off of this hard earned couponing that I did. So I host a stockpile sale to make some income. Now I will tell you guys that I do not answer any tax questions. I am not certified to do that. So please ask your CPA or whoever you may go to for tax advice, any questions that you have as far as that goes. I will not be answering any questions as far as taxes go for couponing or coupon or, or stockpile sales or anything like that. So please ask your own advisor. So those are the two main reasons that people host stockpile sales. And I do about one to two a year and it really helps me with both of those reasons to move my stock as we know I'm a one woman band and cannot possibly use all this and to that I earned some additional funds from all of this couponing that I did and have a fresh start with my stockpile. Next, let's talk about advertising for a stockpile sale. There are four ways that I advertise for my own sales. The first one is Facebook Marketplace. One to two days before the sale, I will hop on Facebook Marketplace and create a post with 10 pictures showing all of the items that I have, maybe not all, but as many as I possibly can. And then in the description, I will put the day and times of my sale. I will put kind of a description of what items I have for sale. And then I will also put my address. So if you're not comfortable with putting your address, you can put maybe the subdivision name if you have one in there, at least to get them in the general direction. Um, but that's really just gonna be up to you. I, I think it would be really hard to pay, post on Facebook Marketplace if you don't put an address or at least a general direction in which people could find you. So another thing with posting on Facebook Marketplace is 
people more than likely will want to buy stuff ahead of time. So if you're comfortable with that, you could meet them either at your house. I don't recommend that, which is kind of, I guess, contradicting as we're having a stockpile sale. But I still consistently meet people at um, public locations like HEB or a gas station or anything like that. Um, but either way, that's to each their own. And you could sell stuff ahead of time or you could tell them to please wait to the stockpile sale and come then. So that is up to you and that is one of the main ways that I would say to market your stockpile sale. Two is to post on your own public or private Facebook. Um, usually, like I mentioned, you're selling to your neighbors, your friends, your community. And if you have a ton of those people on Facebook, your own personal Facebook, I recommend advertising there to bring traction as well. So post the same stuff that you did on Marketplace onto your own personal Facebook to gain people to come to yourself from there. Next, it is going to be making signs. That is my always go-to. That's when I first started. I always made sure I had signs. I make sure they're at the front of my neighborhood, the back of my neighborhood, within the neighborhood, guiding people toward my, toward my house and toward my cell. So that is definitely huge and a must do. And then finally, I promote in my subdivision Facebook page. So my subdivision has their own page where anyone in that community, you know, if they have a lost dog or if they are selling a couch, whatever it may be, they have their own private group. And I post in there because, again, we're trying to drive our neighbors and our community to come to our sale. So those are the four things that I do for myself. So that is posting on Facebook Marketplace, posting on your own personal Facebook, posting on any subdivision groups that you may have, and then also finally making signs. There's one more thing I wanted to mention in regards to what days and what time you have your stockpile sales. Now, your stockpile sale could be one day, it could be three days, it could be every other month. My HOA only allows us to do a garage sale or whatever once every six months. So I can only do two a year at my house. So that is one factor that I take into consideration when I'm doing stockpile sales. Another is I generally just run them on Saturdays from like 7 to 11, 7 to 12, or 8 to 12. Um, this time I did open up the night before for two hours on Friday. I did from 6 to 8 and it was really busy. So I'm super grateful that I did that. I did have a lot of stuff to get rid of. So that actually worked out really great just a couple of hours on Friday and a few hours on Saturday. But like I said, you guys can host your sales whatever day and time you think works best for you. The final thing I wanted to mention as far as advertisement goes for the stockpile sale is where I get my signs that I display out in my neighborhood to advertise the sale. And I actually make them. I grab the sticks from Walmart. They are found near the trash cans or where the pre-made yard sale signs are. I grab those and then I also grab some poster board. I like to get the bright color ones. You know, we want everyone to see that we are having a sale to drive the traffic towards your uh, stockpile sale. So get a bright colored one and then also grab a big Sharpie and I would write stockpile sale on it. Um, you can draw arrows, you can put out multiple, you can staple the um, poster board on the front and the back or just the front. It's really up to you how you want to do it, but that is how I advertise. Usually mine kind of get a little messed up and I always like to have fresh ones for each sale. So I just rip the poster board off when I'm done Go get new, what are they, like 50 cents, a dollar poster board for the next sale and create me some new signs. And yeah, y'all, that's all I do for my signs to promote my stockpile in my neighborhood. Let's talk now about everyone's probably most asked question, and that is the prices of the stockpile items. Now, keep in mind why we are doing a stockpile, and that is to move our items out of our stockpile in bulk. So I will tell you guys, my prices for a stockpile sale is lower than that of a bundle on Facebook Marketplace because I am just trying to get rid of these items. 
Also too, I live in Texas. The cost of living is not that high as other places, such as maybe New York or California. So just adjust your prices accordingly. Like I said, you can agree to disagree with my prices, but I will keep a list in my description for you guys to reference if needed. Um, and that is usually what has worked well for me. Some items still do sell better than others. Even if I have them super cheap, they just don't sell for me, but they may work for you. So like I said, review your area, your demographic, um, how much you spent on the items to see what you can sell your items at. All right, y'all, I'm going to roll the footage of all of that. And I will also talk about where I got all of my storage containers and everything for the stockpile sale. All right, y'all, let's talk about preparing for a stockpile sale. Now, to me, preparation is the most important as well as the most time consuming part of the sale. And with that being said, I'm going to skip over the part of me hauling all of this stuff down to my dining room from my upstairs couponing room. But I will tell y'all this, the most important piece of advice that I could give y'all is to be organized. And I'm not talking about just being organized for the sale. I'm talking about being organized as far as your stockpile goes in general. You guys know I love to keep my stuff in crates and there's a couple of reasons for that. One, it makes it so much easier to haul all of my stuff downstairs when I get ready for a stockpile sale. I just grab the crate and go. There's no loading the crate from the shelves. It's just so much easier for me. Second reason is it contains all of my like items, which makes pricing for a stockpile sale so much faster and saves me a lot of time there. So that's why I have crates and I will go over in a little bit where I get those crates and how much I pay for them. So I mentioned, I'm not going to show you guys any of that footage of me actually organizing here, but I will show you guys each of my crates or I'm going to try to get to as many as I can show you what's in them and how I kind of group the items and then also tell you the pricing of each item in the bin. Um, you'll see that that shouldn't take me as long as per my method of how I organize for my stockpile sales. But if I don't make it to a, a bin and you want to know the pricing of what I price my items at in a stockpile sale, I will have a Google sheet in the description that you can check out. And when you're doing that, guys, please keep in mind that this is my pricing that I charge for my stockpile sale. Not every stockpile sale is going to be the same. For one, I live in Houston, Texas, and you might live in California where the cost of living is just a little bit higher. So prices can vary. So keep in mind that this is my pricing. Also, I want to reiterate to you guys my purpose for a stockpile sale. My stockpile sale is yes, to make money. Of course, I want to make as much money as I can. But my other goal is to move my stock. So my pricing is very competitive. And some of y'all might even say it's too cheap. But you know what? I want this stuff gone. And whatever doesn't sell is usually what I donate. Um, so that is my main goal in a stockpile sale is to move this stuff. So, I mean, I'm not going to move it as quickly if I've got something, you know, that's you know normally 50% off of retail pricing. I may drop it a dollar lower, but I'm hoping that moves it faster and I get a clean, fresh start with my stockpile to do this all over again. So please keep that in mind when you are reviewing my prices. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer those in the comments. All right, y'all, let's jump into talking about my storage containers as well as the pricing for all of the items. Before I talk about the pricing of the items, I want to talk about the crates that I keep my stock in. I have gotten all of my crates from Walmart and they are a regular $7. So that's pretty pricey. So what I like to do being the couponer and clearance shopper that I am, I like to score these on clearance when Walmart puts the back to school items on clearance. If you follow me on Instagram, you know I was able to grab eight of these light blue crates for $2.50 each. And a couple days later, I checked out a Walmart near work and they had four crates on the top shelf for 50 cents. 50 cents, y'all. I literally felt like I was in a dream, that I won the lottery. Literally the highlight of my week was finding these crates for 50 cents. Such a steal. So I know they're kind of expensive. If you're just getting started, you could buy a couple and then wait till next year until um, back to school goes on clearance again to grab you some. But again, they're $7 at Walmart if you need them. 
And leading into the pricing of my items, y'all, I do not have the patience to individually mark every item in my stockpile for the stockpile sale. So what I use the crates for is to put all similar like items together that I'm going to price for the exact same thing. So the first crate here is this Colgate and Crest toothpaste. I call this my higher end toothpaste. Um, these are ones that, you know, we don't necessarily get every week from Walgreens. These are going to be like your Colgate Renewal, your Crest Pro Health, stuff like that. These are my $2 or this is my $2 bin of toothpaste. So I know every single toothpaste in there is going to be $2 and there are a couple options that you can do. One, you can mark this crate saying it's $2 each. Or what I like to do and saves me a little bit more time is I have a $2 table in my stockpile sale. So everything on that table is $2 each. And then I will show you guys here in a minute how I make my signs for those tables. Here's an example of a sign that I'm going to use to indicate my dollar table. I'm going to make four of these and I'm going to put one on each end of the table and one on each side of the table. So that way, if there are multiple people looking at items on that table, they will know what the price is for each item. So I'm going to have maybe a couple dollar tables, a couple of $2 tables, um, one table that's for items under a dollar that I'll mark, and as well as maybe one table for items over $2. I don't have too many, but I will probably just do one or two of each. I'll try to show you guys when the day comes what my tables exactly look like so you can get an idea of how it is set up. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to mark tables instead of baskets, but say this was my dollar basket. I would just tape this right here and set it out there on that day. So when people are digging through it, they know everything is a dollar. And again, I'm not bashing anyone that marks every single item like I really wish that could be me I really do but like I mentioned I just don't have the patience for that so it's really your preference on how you mark your items for yourself I forgot to mention how I made this sign and y'all all I get is a big poster board cut it up into about nine different parts and use a sharpie to write my pricing on it as you can see the edges aren't even straight it is nothing fancy you could make them as fancy as you would like. Maybe you plan to reuse them for each stockpile sale. That works too. I just throw mine away. Like this weekend, we're expecting some rain here in Houston. So if they get messed up, it's it's nothing worth crying over. So I usually just throw mine away. But like I said, you could make them as fancy, as nice as you would like. I recommend getting a bright color so that way they are noticed by all of the people shopping your sale. So we established that I charge $2 for the fancier toothpaste, if you will, but I only charge $1 for the Colgate toothpaste that we get free pretty much every week at Walgreens and CVS. So that is the Colgate Optic White, the Colgate Total, the Colgate Max Fresh, all a dollar. And even these three packs of the cheaper Colgate products, I also only charge a dollar to get rid of them. So a dollar for those because, again, we're pretty much getting that free every week through couponing. And then something else as far as oral care goes that I charge a dollar for are items in this bin. So these are the smaller mouthwashes, like these smaller bottles of Colgate that we get that I only charge a dollar for. I'm not too sure how popular these are with people. So I just charge a dollar for these Colgate Swish mouthwashes. And y'all, I really am surprised at myself, but I don't have a lot of Crest toothpaste for some reason. And I only have about three or four boxes in here. And so I charge a dollar for those type of Crest toothpaste as well. Remember, I charge $2 for the more expensive brand of cold, uh, I'm sorry, Crest toothpaste. And then also Burt's Bees for the kids, a dollar. Um, and a couple of floss picks and stuff like that that I'm also charging a dollar for. So everything in here a dollar as well as all of this style of Colgate toothpaste for a dollar as well. There are some oral care products that I sell for under a dollar and the reason being is they're just inexpensive products. They're all items I've gotten for free so I'm just trying to get rid of them at this point so I place them for 50 cents. All of these toothbrushes are super cheap and they're 50 cents. We've got the cheap 
cheap Crest toothpaste. They're all 50 cents. And then there's a couple of floss products that are also 50 cents. Rounding out the pricing for oral care products, we have the larger bottles of mouthwash. So for Colgate, we have the 32 fluid ounce bottles. And then we have the one liter bottles for the Crest. For both of these, I charge $2. So for the bigger bottles, I charge $2 and the smaller ones, I charge just $1. Next, let's talk shaving products. So for my shaving products, I have them broken out into three bins. I have a dollar bin, a $2 bin, and a $3 bin. I'm gonna start with the $1 bin. So of course we have our favorite razors, these, a dollar, of course. Um, another little um, disposable pack there, that's a dollar. And then I got a bunch of these. For free so I just put those at a dollar because I don't think many people are gonna want those um, I have these razors here at a dollar and then most of my shaving cream is gonna be a dollar even the Nivea and then of course we've got edge and skin to mint all a dollar and then we got these nair creams for free don't know how popular those are gonna be so I'm just putting them at a dollar as well we have a pretty full $2 razor bin. I will show you guys what kind of razors I have in there. Here is what we have for Bic. And then Skintiment. For men, some of the Chic examples. And then Bic for men. Some more Bic. And more Bic for women. And then I also have these Nivea Men um, Post Shave Balms in there as well for $2. Finally, we have our most expensive crate of razors. These are going to contain the Gillette razors that we get for free a lot at CVS, as well as the Venus ones. And then we have our more expensive Chic and Skintimate, as well as Dollar Shave Club. Let's talk makeup next, y'all. I talked about it briefly on Instagram, but makeup is always just $1 to me. I always have a ton of it. It is always free for me at the stores, and I also make money on it, so I just need to get rid of it at that point. So I literally do every piece for just $1. If it's a bigger piece like this, maybe a little bit more, but for the most part, your everyday um, foundations, powders, eyeshadows, anything like that, I just charge $1. So for the Febreze sprays, I say you could probably charge anywhere between a dollar and a dollar fifty. I'm probably just gonna do a dollar for this stockpile sale. And then for the single pack of plugs and the other items in this bin, I'm gonna do two dollars. And then there's this candle. Everything in here, two dollars. Finally, we have our bigger packs of the plugins and small spaces. So obviously there's just one more than that was in the $2 bin. So this is a $4 bin. So $4 for each of those. And then I also have an item I don't normally have, which are these hearth and hand um, oil diffusers. So I'm gonna charge $4 for those as well. Okay, let's move on to feminine care. This is my $2 bin I have these in there it is a really big pack of those and then i've got whoop, the always all of those carefree breeds that we always get those are the bigger packs then i've got this brand in there i've got some poise ultra thin pads let's see these and the always pure so that's what i have in my two dollar bin for the small liners, I only charge 25 cents. Most of all of these should have been free. So at that point, I just need them gone. If they don't go, I donate these. Here is my dollar bin of feminine care. We have the smaller bags of the carefree pads and liners. We have the U by Kotex Clip Tampons, U by Kotex Teen. We've got these liners. Show you a few more things that are there. So yeah, this bin is a dollar each. So I don't really resell laundry products in stockpile sales. I just like to do those on Marketplace. Um, they move really quick on there. Um, but I'm gonna put these snuggle out for a dollar and I have these Myers dish soaps that I'm gonna put out for $2. Over in this corner, I have like my lotions and I don't know why, but I have these big things of Vaseline in here. I'm gonna move those over with the skincare 
um, and make those $2 probably as well as this Nivea. Um, but all of these smaller bottles of Vaseline, a dollar, Baby Aveeno, those were kind of expensive. Just going to do a dollar on them though so I can get rid of them. And these Nivea Men Cream Tins, a dollar as well. Hair dye does not sell very quickly for me, so I have a ton of it. And it is all kind of like makeup, a dollar each. So the next three bins that I'm going to show you are all hair care products, and they are all $2 each. So I'm going to run through them really quick. We got OGX, Pantene, Tresemme, John Frieda, and Nexus. So in the next crate, I've got Patiche Dry Shampoo. I've got the bigger bottles as well as the small. I know it's $2 for both, but either way, great price. Then I've got the L'Oreal. I've got the small things of Miel and then also those conditioners. And then I also have this Nickelodeon slime in the back. Last bin, we have these Garnier Fructi Sleek Shots, Dove Amplified, Axe, Shea Moisture, some more L'Oreal, the big bottle of Garnier, and more Tresemme, and this L'Oreal. Next, let's talk air freshener products. These are always free, and we always have a ton of them. Whether they're Airwick or Febreze, I really don't care. I just charge 50 cents for each one. So this crate has a little mix of items. And the reason being, this is my 50 cent bin for like body wash, shampoo, and apparently Glade. I have the Suave Kids, regular Suave Professionals, Suave Lotion. Okay, maybe it's pretty much just a Suave bin with some Glade spray, but it's a lot of just your cheaper products here that I'm gonna put out for 50 cents each. Let's take a look at body wash and shampoo and conditioner next. So this is a bin full of body wash and it is $2 each. I'll show you what I've got in there. I've got dial, two different kinds of dial. I've got degree, dove, axe, and old spice. And then in my bin over here, this is all products that are a dollar. And so we've still got some cheaper shampoo such as Garnier. Um, we've got soft soap. Really didn't know about these. I can't remember how much I paid for those. We've got these smaller head and shoulders, like the really tiny one, like that is 8.45 fluid ounces. We've got Irish Spring. We've got a small thing of Old Spice and a big bottle of Suave. So everything in there is $1. So I have my facial care products divided up into two bins. I have the $1 bin and the $2 bin. So I'm gonna start off by showing you guys what's in the $1. Of course, we've got a ton of St. Ives, $1. We got a ton of Clean and Clear, $1. And then there are a couple of Aveeno products and Simple products that I have for a dollar as well. And then over in the $2, we've got more of our Nivea, Bulldog, Hi Lexi, Aveeno. And then I also have some sunscreen in here, some Copper Tone. And we've got Noxema, Alba, and just a couple of other miscellaneous things. And Neutrogena in this bin as well for $2. As far as diapers go, I have just a few that I'm going to set out, and they're all going to be for $4. I've got these Huggies, a few things of these Splashers, and then pull-ups, all going to be $4 each. Almost forgot the deodorants over here, and they're all going to be $2. I really didn't have any super cheap brands, so in here we had the Degree, we have Old Spice, we have Dove, Degree for Women, We've got Secret, this type of axe, Gillette, then we've got the Native brand, have a bunch of those. So yeah, I don't, like I said, I don't really have any of the cheaper deodorants, so I'm going to go ahead and place all these at $2. Okay, the last thing I want to show you guys is what is on my table. Um, and I mainly don't want to talk about the pricing of everything on my table. I did talk about the makeup, but I don't really want to talk too much about anything else because if it's on a table, it's probably super cheap. Um, most of this is a dollar or less. So what I really wanted to talk to you guys about were the containers that I have everything. 
And I'll start off by saying that most of the containers or the tubs are from Dollar Tree. So like these are from Dollar Tree. This is from Dollar Tree. This kind is from Dollar Tree. Um, so a lot are from Dollar Tree. This one I believe is from Five Below. Those are from Walmart. And then these are from Dollar Tree as well. And I want to tell you guys about my favorite one that I have. It is this right here. I love, if I can get it out. Ooh. I love that it's clear. I love that you can snap it. And I love that it has a, it has a handle. Y'all, those are $1 at King Dollar. So I guess that's like Dollar Tree's cousin or something. But I absolutely love those. I wish I would have picked up more. They are perfect for all of these little bar soaps, which I'll probably sell those at a dollar as well. So that is where I get all of my smaller totes. I mentioned that I do not really sell laundry products in my stockpile sales, but if I did, I would do this for the pricing. My Tide would probably be about $2 or so, $2.50. The Downy would be $3, $3.50. Same with the beads. For those downy dryer sheets, I'd probably do two and then maybe this one a dollar or a dollar fifty. So that just gives you an idea on what I would price it for laundry care items. All right, y'all. So I had every intention, you know, getting up early this morning and filming this all for you when we had it ready and before everyone got here, but that didn't happen. We opened at seven and it was just crazy scent. So we sold a ton of stuff. But I just wanted to show you guys kind of what my setup looks like, just so you guys get the gist. So here is how I put the poster boards on the table. And then I put my crates just in the general area of where, you know, where the sign is for the dollar. And then, you know, halfway down the table, I have the 50 cents each. Um, so then I do that. And then normally I have a full dollar table, but like I said, we sold a bunch of stuff. And I normally have a full $2 table. And this is kind of what I have left in these crates. We were able to consolidate a ton. And then here was some $4 and $3 items that I had left. Um, a couple of things I wanna say, if you can invest in a canopy, especially if you're somewhere like Texas, it's extremely hot, your stuff is gonna be on fire out here. So invest in a canopy or two if you can, and also get you some help. There's my mom, she's helping me out, and my boyfriend Matt is helping as well. Um, this was the busiest we have ever been, and I'm super grateful for it. So, and I'm also grateful to have their help. Um, so again, just kinda wanna show you guys a little bit of my setup. And then I'm also having like a um, garage sale so i had a ton of people here for that so i won't be able to tell you guys exactly how much i made because it is combined in with my garage sale stuff but i will tell you all this is the most people i've ever had here and it was super busy so super excited for that but here is a kind of final overview for you guys kind of my setup like i said i already got rid of a ton of stuff so i usually have about three to four tables full and stuff under the tables as well with the stockpile sale complete, I did want to apologize again, guys, for not filming more content during the sale. I intended to film before everyone got there at 7, but from 7 to close, we were super busy. So again, I do apologize. I am super grateful that I was that busy. It was my best sale ever. And there were a couple reasons for that. I would like to think it's my great marketing, but it's probably not. Um, it's one, my neighborhood has grown exponentially. It is a new neighborhood that is still building. So it has grown exponentially over the last year. And I also hosted a garage sale on top of my stockpile sale. So I believe that drove in some more people as well. But super grateful for how busy it was and thankful that Matt and my mom were there to help as it was so busy. That's another reminder, guys, to at least have one person with you just in case for those busy times to help you handle some of the people coming in to buy your items. But y'all, that's all I have for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments. Maybe I missed something. Maybe you had a, or need a little bit more clarification on something. I'll be happy to answer those in the comments. All right, guys. See you on the next video. Bye.